Welcome back guys to another cyberpunk video and to the first build after patch 2.11. Assault rifles and SMGs are not really known for their high damage output after patch 2.0, but today I will show you a build that will completely change the way you play this game. This is by far the best rifle build with absolute zero recoil and over 3000 damage per hit. By connecting some of the most powerful cyberware I have never used before with the correct weapons, I have created something that is so powerful that you will never want to play as a Netrunner ever again. With this build you can go completely stealth, killing every enemy, even the highest and most powerful lead enemies with a single shot without ever being detected and without having to use the pistol for that. You can either go all in with an offensive build or make a true rifle sniper build that is able to kill off every enemy with a single shot including max tech. If you want to go for the stealth sniper rifle build, you should pick up the Prejudice from the Rogue ending. The Prejudice has an increased damage versus lead enemies and an additional 100% critical damage. This alone is enough to make it the absolute most powerful rifle in the game. But if you want to play more offensively, you should check out the Carmen from the Balls on the Wall quest in Dogtown. If you help the two Bargast soldiers, you will get this weapon for free, but you can also get it later from the Weapon Stealer. The Carmen features a unique 50% armor penetration combined with a 40 round magazine with absolute deadly precision. But if things get really worse, you can of course always rely on the Problem Solver. The Problem Solver has the highest fire rate in the game combined with a 90 rounds magazine that will eliminate every enemy you come across. And to create the most powerful build ever, we will also use all of our latest tricks. First and foremost, the counter shell hack, which gives you up to 100% mitigation chance and 75% mitigation strength whenever you lose 35% health. So once you get hit, you will literally become invincible almost forever thanks to its insanely low cooldown. Additionally to that, we will make every weapon have absolute zero recoil. If you combine mind over meta with the correct cyberware and a strigory muzzle, even the problem solver will have absolute zero recoil. However, what is still left is the spread of every weapon, which is still kind of significant for the problem solver, but almost completely not existent for the Carmen, and especially the prejudice will become an absolute deadly laser pointer. I also put a lot of thought into improving the healing system. As you know, borrowed time will grant you a free healing item charge and biomonitor will always instantly consume it even at low health. But since we always used blood pump as our healing item, it was not possible to use second heart and heal on kill at the same time. But if we drop the blood pump for a standard legendary max dog, we will not only get 126 health per charge, which is way more than from the blood pump, but we can also use heal on kill instead of blood pump, which gives us 7.5% health, which is also more than the blood pump would generate over time. It is also important to mention that the max dog will have no animation during combat, it is simply instantly used like the blood pump and it will also still give you adrenaline. All this makes the blood pump completely obsolete. Of course there are many ways to enjoy and play this build, but one of the most fun playstyles I found was to use the Prejudice as a new stealth sniper rifle. As you will never be detected, this combination will outperform any other sniper rifle in the game. You can of course also go all in with an assault rifle like the Carmen and kill off everyone, or use a problem solver if you get really in deep trouble. I would also definitely recommend to pick up a blade as a backup, because some bosses can be much much easier if you just go in and kill them just with a blade instead of using your assault weapons. But now let's check out the build guys. By the way, if you want to support me creating more of these crazy builds, then consider to become a patron or YouTube member or check out our Discord server. The first weapon of choice should be the Prejudice, no matter if you want to go stealth or not, this weapon is just plain insane thanks to its additional 100% critical damage and the increased damage versus elite enemies. It is basically as powerful as when you use the Pride. But as it is a rifle, we are able to use much more powerful scopes such as the legendary Zyka scope, which not only increases your range but also gives you crit chance and critical damage at the same time. We will also attach the best silencer in the game which is the XC10 Cetus which has 150% stealth damage and only a 10% damage reduction. Don't misunderstand the damage reduction here on those silencers. Damage reduction is a negative stat that is applied to all your silencers. Uncommon silencers have a very high damage reduction while legendary silencers have only a very limited damage reduction. But in general this is vastly outperformed by the stealth damage multiplier so you don't really have to worry about it. If you are missing any of those legendary attachments you can find all of them by simply doing one of those car contracts. There is always a guaranteed legendary attachment drop when you complete those missions. 
The most powerful feature which sets the Karman apart is definitely its 50% armor penetration, which is higher than any other rifle. If you equip a Striguri muzzle to this weapon, it will become as deadly as a laser pointer. An RC Ace one can be used as an alternative option, but it will only reduce the recoil angle, but not removing the recoil entirely. So the Striguri is definitely the best. As a third option you can go for the problem solver. The problem solver will best perform with a Kanotsugo optics and also with an RC7 Striguri. These two attachments will give you an additional 15% crit chance and 10% critical damage combined with a 20% recoil reduction. And this is definitely needed for this weapon. However, if you want to use an alternative, you can go for the Byako as a blade. This blade will not only speed up boss fights, but it is also a good backup if you run out of ammo, since you can't craft ammo during combat. For the operating system we will use the Militech Falcon Santa Vista and which will work especially great together with the Prejudice and the iconic immovable force will greatly reduce our recoil and our spread. As already explained for the healing item we will go with a regular legendary max dog and for the grenades you can basically equip what you want. For the cyberware you will need at least 316 capacity which should be easily reachable by everyone if you just have renaissance punk and the atronas perk. Even if you don't have enough capacity you should definitely not change the operating system and the crit chance items, keep the damage reduction, keep the precision items and also keep the improved healing items. Other stuff can be changed but I strongly recommend to use this build as shown. In the frontal cortex you can use the mechatronic core, it is actually not needed to use the axe dotl for this build. However if you have the needed capacity for the axe dotl you can of course still add the axe dotl in one of the other slots. For the operating system we will go for the Falcon Sandavistan. The Falcon Sandavistan has a longer duration than the Apogee Sandavistan, costs less capacity and gives us additional health per kill, which has a great synergy effect together with heal on kill. For our eyes we will use the Kiroshi Cockatrice optics that will give us additional 35% crit chance that will make sure that every shot we fire will always be a guaranteed 100% critical hit. However if you don't have the DLC simply go for the standard optics instead. The arm slot should be empty to save up capacity. If you really want to run around with a blade then you can simply equip a katana which is the better option anyway. In the skeleton slots we will first use the bionic joints which is the most effective armor item that gives us 130 armor for only 6 capacity. The skeleton will give us an additional 15% max health and also another big chunk of armor, but especially because of the health increase this is really really valuable. Then the last slot should be filled with the spring joints. The spring joints will give us an additional 90% mitigation strength. Combined with the neofiber we will get up to 30% additional mitigation strength. Then of course we will go for the reflex tuner as usual and to increase the crit chance for our ranged weapons we will go for the visual cortex support. The standard visual cortex support is actually more than enough to make every shot a critical hit. You don't have to go for the iconic items because you will have 100% crit chance anyway. In the integumental system you should go for shock and awe. Shock and awe will occasionally release electroshocks that will greatly damage all the enemies around you and makes it much much easier to kill and finish them off. Shock and awe is much more helpful to fight police and max tags than just going for pure armor or health increases. However I would still go for Carapace since Carapace increases your armor effectiveness by over 32% if you attack from back or from the sides. If you want to make a full stealth build you can of course also replace Carapace and simply use the optical camo instead. And last but not least we'll go for counter shell. Counter shell gives us an additional 50% mitigation chance whenever we lose 35% health and it only has a 6 second cooldown. So counter shell will literally work forever and makes us forever invincible. In our hand slots we will go for the shock absorber and immovable force to remove every single bit of recoil for every weapon in the game. However the additional effect that is written on immovable force doesn't really seem to work as there is no real weapon which could make use of it. Any mitigation shards or mitigation strengths you will maybe get from behind cover will not work even when you wear immovable force. So you basically only use this item to get the reduced recoil and the reduced spread. In the circulatory system we will go for a second heart, heal on kill and bio monitor. As I explained at the beginning we will replace the blood pump with heal on kill because heal on kill will also give us additional health from every enemy we kill and the bio monitor can still be used together with a max dog without having any healing animation and the max dog will even give us more health than the blood pump which makes the blood pump completely obsolete. And of course last but not least don't forget the tendons for your double jump. For the additional stats on your cyberware you should go for increased headshot damage, stealth damage, health and health item recharge speed. 
For the skills we will go for the standard 20 body, 20 reflex and 20 tech and all the remaining points should be spent on cool. This has basically become the standard skill point distribution for anything that is not a netrunner. If you don't have the DLC you can just remove a few points from cool. On our body we actually only have to go for the center tree, pick up all the standard stuff here at the bottom, especially Dorp Head which gives you 100% mitigation chance whenever you use a healing item and then go for Adrenaline. Adrenaline will also work with any other healing item, it does not only work with Blood Pump. Also pick up the finisher for the increased health item recharge speed. And a reflex we have a lot more than usual this time because we will also go for almost the entire left tree which boosts our SMGs and assault rifles. Especially go for spice of life to reduce the bullet spread and also go for mind over matter to reduce the recoil. These two are almost one of the most mandatory things to get in this tree. Sharpshooter and everything that is connected to Sharpshooter will then greatly boost our weapon effectiveness and our damage and salt in the wound is almost entirely not needed anymore because you will likely never make more than 2 or 3 hits to kill your enemies. You can also go for submachine fun to increase the fire rate for your SMGs. However, both of these finishers are more useful on lower levels than on max level. On max level you will have no issues with damage anyway. To improve your movement you should also go for slippery and dash and if you want to play with blades then also go for everything that leads to flash and thunderclap that will make you leap forward and kill all your enemies in a single strike. Additionally you can also go for the finishers and everything that improves your finishers and of course don't forget to get the air dash. In the tech tree you should first go for the left tree which improves your health and healing item abilities. However you should only get pyromaniac if you want to use weapons which have burn or explosive damage. Go for Glutton for War, Health Freak and then absolutely get Borrow Time as soon as you can. Borrow Time is a secret god mode perk that will always give you a free health item charge whenever you are low health and about to get killed. On a Pyromaniac you should go for Heat Shield for the increased mitigation chance and Friendly Fire to reduce explosive damage that you cause. In the center tree of course go for All Things Cyber, License to Chrome and the Edge Runners perk to increase your cyberware capacity to the absolute maximum. For this build we have to unlock two cyberware slots for our hands by getting ambidextrous and of course go for Extended Warranty to increase the duration for all cyberware, Chrome Constitution will reduce the damage, Renaissance Punk will give us more capacity and Driver Update and Chipwork Connoisseur will increase and improve the additional stats on our cyberware. On our cool we will get Feline food Foodwork and also some of the additional perks which gives us increased mitigation chance and mitigation strength when we are crouched or sneaking. If you have enough points to get high into cool then you should also go for Ninjitsu but it is much more important to get Killer Instinct for the increased stealth damage, quick getaway and gag order to delay the detection by enemies. If you want to make this a full stealth build you can also improve your optical karma with Creeping Death and Vanishing Act. The relic tree doesn't contain any major game changers that would be important for this build. Of course you can go for the weak spot and the additional cloaking perks if you want to make a stealth build. I hope you really like this build. Please don't forget to subscribe, leave me a like and see you next time.